Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access using the Northwind sample database. In previous screencasts in this playlist, we've talked about finding, moving, renaming a database, trusting a database so we don't get those annoying message bars, bypassing the startup options with the shift key, reverse engineering the startup options, and looking at these series of startup forms that come with the Northwind database. And the reason we study the Northwind database is because we want to learn. We want to learn about how these cool forms and reports were created so we can apply them to our own databases. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here as myself. And the next screen, the next form that's presented is this main menu form. And it's really cool because I can click on these different words, add order or customers, close or reports. I see different things in this big section of the main menu form. If I click on the employees option, I see a report of employees. So this is a cool form that's helping us navigate through other areas of the database that we might like. So we might want to create something like this for our users. So let's go into design view. and I just want to show you a couple of things that are really key when you're trying to figure out how something was built in a form or report in Access. When I try to go to design view in the main menu form, I'm getting a message that says, are you sure you want to close it? If yes, you can find it again in the navigation pane or restart the application. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And now I'm in design view of form main menu. I'm going to go ahead and toggle close that navigation pane so I've got a little bit more room to work with. And when you get into design view of a former report, the first thing you probably want to do is see what record set that former report is built on. And to do that, you select the form. It's already selected by default with this little button in the upper left-hand corner. And then you open the property sheet and go to the data tab. And it's telling you on the record source property what set of records this former report is built on. And this one doesn't have any records because it's not used for data entry or editing. It's used to navigate throughout the other parts of the application. So I'm going to leave my property sheet open and then click on some of these things I'm curious about, such as orders, add order, and customers. And I can see that there are command buttons at the property sheet level. So a command button is something that you click on and then something happens. To find out what happens, I click the event tab on the on-click property. There's an embedded macro, and I can even explore what that embedded macro is by clicking the build button, and then it's telling me that this macro has one action, the open form action, and it's opening form customer list. So I can close that and go back and continue exploring this form in design view. But the key to exploring a form or report in design view is first clicking on what you want to examine and noticing what that is with this big orange outline and then opening up the property sheet to see the specific details of what makes that control work the way it does. For example, if I wanted to know what's going on here, I can see that it's a subform. And if I wanted to see what records that subform is displaying, I would select the form selection button for the subform and go to the data tab and I can see that, oh, the source of the records for this report is record source QRY orders, QRY being the prefix for query. I can then click the build button and look and find the query that creates QRY orders. And I can see that it exists of one, two, three different tables and then two different queries that were also linked in give me all the fields that I need for this particular display. When I look at this field full name, F name, L name, I suspect that F name is first name and L name is last name. I see that that comes from QRY CBO employees. Hmm, I'm curious about that now. So I can close the query. I'm not going to make any changes. I can close form main menu and I can dig into the navigation pane by selecting object type at the top and all access objects at the bottom because I'm the developer, I want to see everything, and dig into that query, URY CBO employees, and double click that query. And I get all the employee IDs, the their names, and their Windows username. If I go into design view of that query, then I can look and see exactly how those fields were created for that particular query. 
So again, it's a matter of being able to navigate through your database, through your application, go into design view, open up the property sheet, find the properties you're looking for, and then figuring out how things are put together. Now, I'm really curious about this full name, F name, L name, and full name, L name, F name. I think that's first name, last name, and last name, first name fields out of the employees table. That's curious to me. We will tackle those two fields. They're called calculated fields and the pros and cons of calculated fields and tables in the next screencast. This one was just to show you how to get under the covers and start reverse engineering all these wonderful forms and reports that the Northwind database displays. Thank you.